first just to recap what we did in the last uh, session so majorly what i covered was uh, why do markets exist first of all uh, two main purposes uh, one is uh, investing which focuses on getting capital to companies and businesses which need that money so it's a way for a small for a small company or uh, any setup to amass money from a large bunch of people and uh, then use that capital to grow their money so that is investing the other bit is trading which mainly helps with risk management so what happens there is uh, uh, the market serve as a intermediary to help uh, uh, balance the risk of uh, two sets of parties one of them whose objective is uh, okay let me just start with an example uh, imagine you are a farmer uh, in a certain place uh and you say grow wheat and that wheat you are able to reap the harvest twice a year right but all of your in investment is upfront uh, you have to invest in fertilizers pesticides all of these the grains itself uh and there's no guarantee that 6 months down the line whatever money you have initially put into your uh, agriculture that gets uh, reaped right 6 months down the line due to some adverse condition the demand for it might go down the prices might go down and you might not even recover your money right uh, and the other side of this is uh, imagine a baker who is relying on this farmer for his wheat right his problem is uh, what if the wheat price goes up right uh, then he won't be able to correspondingly increase the item of his uh, uh, finished product which he derives from the wheat itself so one guy is worried that the price of wheat will go down the other guy is worried that the price of wheat will go up right so that is where risk management comes into play and uh, a futures uh, market got established initially so what happens there is uh, you as a farmer go out there and say ki 6 months down the line i want to sell a certain amount of wheat at this agreed price and you uh, get into a contract with the other side so both of you have basically locked your price and it's obligatory for you to do this right so that is futures as such one of the things that you can do in trading the futures contract the other is options uh, whereas a futures contract is uh, something which forces you to go ahead with the uh, whatever is the agreement an option contract gives you the option to either do it or not right uh, so the example for that would be uh, uh, something like uh, Okay, I'll just go with the example I gave last time. Imagine you have friends in the chief minister's office, and uh, you come to know that a certain plot of land somewhere in some remote place, uh, which has been stagnant for a whole lot of time, uh, there an airport will come up, right? And with this news, you expect the land price over there to go up, right? So you have asymmetrical information right now. You got to know from your friends that uh, there is an airport coming and prices will shoot up. but this is still not 100% reliable information as such right so what you would do then is uh, go to that village wherever this uh, project is expected to come approach the people over there and they have just seen this land price be stagnant for a whole like for decades as such right you go and tell them uh, take this 1 lakh rupees from me but agree that in the next 6 months uh whenever i choose to i can come in and buy this plot of land at a pre agreed price okay let that be 10 lakhs so he gives one lakh up front and says ki in the next 6 months i want the option to buy this plot of land at 10 lakhs irrespective of what the price of that land is that time right uh so you wait for some time uh imagine the news does come in right uh, that the airport is coming in that case uh, you just go over there and you exercise your option right so once the news comes out it might turn out that the plot of land which was worth 10 lakhs is now worth 1 crore or 10 crore or whatever but you have already secured first rights to that piece of land so you exercised your options contract right so uh, these are two things that are available mainly in trading futures and options and uh, futures mein there's a market for almost every imaginable good that you can think of uh, there's an oil futures market uh, there is coal uh, futures all kinds of things right gold futures and all of these uh, 
it's not just individual people doing it anymore uh, it goes on at a national level also right so india would want to secure its oil price for the next 6 months or a year down the line uh, just to insulate them from the effect of say a war in some region or like uh, oil prices shooting up sometime in the future so everyone does this kind of hedging it's called hedging so hedging basically helps you minimize or kind of balance your risk right so two parts to it investment which is a positive sum game uh, where you put money it generates employment in the overall economy it helps your country grow so that is investment which you do for the long term the trading which is mainly risk management and it's a zero sum game because uh, whenever you enter into a contract if you are on the better side of the contract someone else has lost money so it's net zero sum right uh, if you look at the trading volumes on any given day 90 to 95% of it would be just trading right uh, and it might be just like 5% or even 1% of it which is long term investing what you and i may be doing through sips or uh, even institutional players putting in their money that trading volume is very low on a day to day basis uh, so if you ask like if all the trading that happens in a day is it like actual risk management as such not really uh, it is a lot of hedge funds and all uh, Uh, fighting against each other to make money for their clients right uh, where i worked at true beacon that was an alternative uh, investment fund uh, there are a bunch of these big players blackrock citadel renaissance tech all of these guys come up with sophisticated algorithms uh, which try to make money on minute changes in the market right and there's a whole bunch of science and maths and all of that goes around it uh, to optimize for like a millisecond uh, difference as such right uh, you enter into a contract you see that it has slightly gone up but then you put in a whole bunch of money into that uh, bet as such so you have made a significant profit right like 1000 crore you put in uh, some bet and even if it goes up 0.1% that's a huge deal so uh, a lot of trading is kind of just like rich people throwing their money on a sport as such if you want to simplify it to some extent but yeah it also serves a practical purpose in the economy that is what a lot of people don't realize about markets as such right uh, they see this as a black box where a lot of sophisticated stuff happens and they assume it's all for the good of humanity on an overall scale but the markets what they truly do is uh, reflect the best and worst of uh, human psychology right uh, you see people uh, trade with people's money recently this ftx uh, crypto may all of this scam happened and even when i was interning at true beacon people used to come up to me and ask me do you uh, believe in crypto so my stance has always been like technologies i wait for it to mature and see how it plays out uh, but what you have to realize is there will always be people who try to make a quick buck right uh, crypto as such uh, it went up it comes down all of these are opportunities for you to make money right you can always be a third party observer uh, independent of this you don't even need to understand the underlying technology behind it right you can just see things that are happening around you and uh, there's this quote that i always uh, remember about my own investing as such uh, when your cab driver starts giving you stock tips it's time to sell uh, the rationale behind that is uh, something is so oversold that everyone is talking about it so its price will eventually fall right so that is what happened with crypto also i made a 2.5x return on my investments in crypto but i entered at a time when there was not lot of talk about crypto as such this was after covid people were scared as such but the moment i saw all these web3 influencers and uh, all these uh, meetups happen around me i was like this is my cab driver equivalent moment people who i mean okay uh, let not go there basically the idea is if you are not great at web 2 it's not like web 3 is coming to save you as such right and i saw all these meetups happening and all the circle jerk ha- happening around it i was like it's time to sell i know it will crash soon enough and every day that it happens like it's smug satisfaction ki that is how it turned out right i exited a year back uh, from crypto anyway uh, so that is a broad thing investing trading right uh, so the part i wanted to cover today is uh, technical analysis as such uh, there are two ways to approach uh, this right investing in which uh, you pick up overall trends in the economy uh, you try to guess how the future will shape out and which will be the companies which will uh, 
capitalize on this kind of trend in the future, right? Uh, imagine you are someone in the US in the 60s or 70s or even the 90s and you would uh, see that web is something that is coming up. So if you have the foresight to do it, you could have invested in all these Google, Apples and all of that, right? So that is investing where you try to identify long-term value in a company and how society will shape up and you put your money uh, and you see it grow over time, right? It's one of those things which compounds over time and day to day there's no excitement as such. You just wait for it to play around, right? Uh, one thing I also tell people is if you have invested in a certain company and uh, say after your investment it goes down 5%, 10%, have some kind of uh, resilience to these things. Like a uh, lot of what happens in the short term is just uh, pure mania, right? Uh, even good companies go through 20% drawdowns and all in the short term. But if you are a long term investor, just ask yourself like has your thesis around this company changed, right? You invested in say a renewable technology company assuming ki this is something that will pick up in the future. Uh, be very thorough with why you want to invest. It's not just enough to identify a certain uh, emerging trend. You also need to invest in a company which capitalizes on this trend, right? Uh, because even when the Silicon Valley boom happened, there are hundreds of companies which manufactured uh, these uh, microprocessors and all, but a few em eventually emerged as winners, right? So it's not just be enough to be right about a trend, you also need to be able to pick the winners. And the way to pick winners is identify some moat around that company, why this particular company will beat its competitors in the long term and why not anyone else. It could be the people, that is one of my uh, easiest ways to do uh, investing as such. Uh, I don't have much knowledge or information about people who diligently track a particular industry, right? But you can bet on the people who are running these companies. Like, uh, uh, I mean, these days there's enough media uh, available for you to assess a certain founder or an individual, right? If you believe in this person and uh, if you think that is a person who can take a company forward, like invest in that person. That is also a valid enough option. What everyone does is uh, invest in index funds, right? Uh, so what index funds are basically is, uh, even before that, an index is basically something like Nifty or Sensex. Uh, it uh, is a way to assess the uh, health, the market or the industry health of a country in some sense, right? Because an index uh, shows you a weighted average of the share price of different uh, companies in that country. And uh, Sensex has, I think, top 30 companies or something. Nifty has top 50. So these are representative of a whole variety of industries in your country, which are required for like the general growth and all of that, right? So your bet, if it is that India will uh, rise in the next 20, 30 years, track Nifty as such. That is something that will go up, right? Uh, individual players in pharma or renewables or uh, energy, all of these, you don't know who will be winners. But overall, you might be confident that Nifty itself will go up, right? Because India will go up. So the safest bet for you to do is uh, invest in a uh, index fund. So one example of that is uh, there's this thing called Nifty Bees. That is what I've seen a lot of smart people who do investing full time. They invest in Nifty Bees, but you don't hear much about it because uh, the companies which sell these mutual funds, right? It is also a type of mutual fund, the index fund. What an index fund does is it tries to closely mimic the performance of Nifty, right? So uh, there's not much effort on their part to do it. They are just trying to rebalance their portfolio according to however Nifty is uh, going, right? So least effort on their part. So they also charge the least fees on it, right? Uh, there's a thing called TER, total expense ratio. It's uh, something you can check on all the mutual funds you yourself have invested in. So uh, index fund like uh, Nifty Bs might be having 0.05% or 0.1% fee, but something which is uh, say uh, advertised by all these big players, right? Motilal or uh, Oswal or Franklin Templeton, these will have fees like 1.5%, 2% and all. And you as an investor would think he, that's not a whole bunch of difference, 0 0.05, 0 0.1 versus say a 1.5. That's hardly a difference, but you also need to know investing is a lifelong venture, right? Uh, uh, you can't, it's not even something you can compare to your parents' generation because uh, 
uh, if science does progress as it is, uh, human lifespans, lifespans might increase. And uh, whatever you are planning on retiring by 60 or something, it might not be enough. Imagine you retire at 60 and you go on to live till say 120. That's half of your life still remaining and where you might not be making money. So you need some kind of hedge against inflation, uh, against you not being able to work sometime in the future. So uh, you need to be aware of the fact that a 1% difference over like a 50 year time is a huge difference, right? It can make or break your life. And you won't even hear about all of these funds because no one makes money in an index fund. The people selling it don't make money, so they won't tell you about it. Uh, so about this, like there was an experiment that was conducted by people in the US, I think, uh, where they were comparing the performance of all these uh, mutual fund managers against uh, a gorilla who randomly threw darts on the board uh, on some... Uh, uh, they picked like the top companies, like say our Nifty 50 equivalent, they picked something from S&P 500 or something. They made gorillas throw darts on the board. The performance of these gorillas excelled those of the hedge fund managers over a long period, right? So it is very, uh, like, I mean, it is very naive for you to assume that any person knows what will happen in the future. All you can say is like, India will grow, right? If, you, if that's your viewpoint, invest in an index fund. That has best returns on your money. And uh, that is one thing if you want to be exposed to the markets and everyone should, at least at a young age you should be because uh, you have a lot more time to, even if you lose money in the short term, you have a lot more time to work and make it back. And over time your salaries and all will increase. So right now is the time to take risk. Uh, the other thing that people do is invest in fixed deposits. Uh, again, this is something that banks advertise a lot because it is free money for them to loan it out, right? You give your money to them for fixed deposit, they give you a certain rate of interest, which is way below what they loan it out to people, right? Uh, what no one tells you about is government bonds and uh, state bonds. What these are, are basically, uh, these are issued by government of India uh, to fund their own... Uh, uh, infrastructure projects, any developmental projects, they also need money, so they put out these bonds from time to time. Uh, these offer way better interest rates than your FDs, right? Uh, I'm not sure about the lock-in period, that is something you should look up, but even FDs have lock-in, right? So that shouldn't be a reason not to invest in these. So, I mean, lo what a lot of common people don't know is index funds and uh, GSEC bonds and treasury bills and state government bonds. Uh, all of these you can find on different portals as such. I use Zerodha for all my investment and trading. So their platform coin has uh, visibility into these. Just put your money in these and like, I'm not saying you just transfer all your money from your existing investment. Do it as an experiment, right? See how your other investments compare to these. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I wanted to start that bit with personal finances because... Uh, People who might not be interested in the more technical aspects, at least they have this much of a takeaway from the stock as such, right? So yeah, uh, that is something you folks can do with your own money. So okay, uh, coming to trading itself, uh, if you are one of those people who do want to still invest your own money in a certain company, uh, there are a bunch of things you can do, right? Uh, a lot of people ask me, okay, like, is it a good time to buy Reliance or not? These kinds of stocks, right? Uh, one thing is, like, uh, you need to be clear of what your time frame is. Uh, if you're investing in a large cap company, a large cap is basically a very huge company. Like, in a simplified way, it is a very huge company. If you're investing in something like that, uh, it doesn't matter when you invest uh, because you should be investing in a large cap company for decades as such, right? Uh, so whether the Reliance share price is 100 rupees today as compared to say one week down the line, if you are going to be invested in it for a decade, uh, obviously this 100 rupees is not going to make the difference. So don't try to time the market on a long term investment, right? Uh, the other thing is long term investments you can even do in small and mid cap companies, right? These are the ones which have the potential to compound your money a whole bit because think about it, right? Uh, a Reliance or a Tata or a Mahindra and Mahindra, these people have already covered a whole swath of their addressable market, right? 
and they are trying to still create a new market and that will take decades to happen, right? So it's not that a Reliance stock price will double over the next year or even the two years or five years, right? What you need to see is uh, a small or mid cap company. So uh, auto ancillary as an example, right? Uh, imagine uh, there are all these companies that are moving to India because they want to make in India, importing uh, all their parts and then assembling it here is a huge cost. So, uh, say a Jaguar comes to India and it wants to manufacture here, a Mercedes or anyone, they will require a whole bunch of small parts that go into their car, right? All of these, they can't manufacture themselves. What they do is they put out tenders, putting out their specific specifications, quality standards and all. And a whole industry starts to come around that place, right? So, a Manesar in Gurgaon or uh, in Chennai also, I forgot the name of the place, but there are these hubs where you have a bunch of big factories and around them a whole bunch of smaller industries set up, right? These companies, some of them might be public, uh, they might be properly run as such, uh, but right now they might not have the attention of the market. But you can be an early uh, person who catches this trend, the fact that all these auto manufacturers are moving to India and uh, Say I am a small or medium sized business which supplies a certain component to Mercedes. I might not be stopped from supplying that same a uh, different component to a Mahindra and Mahindra, right? So I have the flexibility to make money of the overall auto growth, right? As people start saving more money, they all buy cars and you don't know which is the one car company which will succeed in the next few decades. But these auto ancillary, these people who are manufacturing say a clutch, a gear or a tire, they will be able to supply horizontally to all these uh, companies which are catering to the end consumer. So that is a great strategy, right? So you can put money in these small and mid cap companies. There you can be a bit more uh, sophisticated about your investing. So that is where technical analysis comes into play. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's move to technical analysis then. Actually, I'll need to project a thing. There is this thing called candlestick charts uh, that exist for uh, looking at the share price of a stock over time, right? So a candlestick chart, uh, it's basically, okay, uh, let me just start with a rough diagram of what it looks like. So assume uh, this is time, this is your share price. So, uh, what a candlestick chart does is, uh, you normally would be used to line graphs which show this, right? Uh, so, in a share, in a candlestick thing, assume the frequent, uh, the least count of this graph is one day, right? So, that is the least level you can see in this graph. So, it will have a bunch of things like these. Okay. Assume... The next candle is and okay. Okay. So uh, this is called a candle. This whole thing is called a candle. These things you see projecting out, it's called a wick, right? So right in. So this is your candle and this and this is your wick, right? Uh, every candle gives you five pieces of information. Uh, first of all, what it is showing you is, uh, okay, let's assume this was uh, 10th November, this was 11th and this was 12th, right? Okay, so first thing to notice is the color. Some of them are red, some are green, right? A red candle, what it tells you is uh, the stock price of this particular share. Uh, let's say this was Tata Motor. So on this day, uh, 10th November, Tata Motors ka share price fell. That is what your red candle tells you. Uh, where it starts, right? Uh, this point was your opening price okay when your market started at 9 15 a.m in the morning this is where it started at this is what it is indicating and this is your closing price 
at 3.30 when the markets closed, this is where it ended. The wicks show you what is the highest price it reached and the lowest price it reached, right? So this is showing you the highest uh, price that the stock went through in the day and this is your lowest point, right? So if you were to look at this particular day ka, uh, candlestick chart itself, you can again split it into hour wise or whatever, minute wise granularity, right? Uh, or you can see it ki, matlab, uh, a representative this for it, if I were to show it as like a line chart, could be ki it started somewhere here, it went up to some point, it went down and it finally closed here, right? So this was your this point, this was this point, this the lowest it reached was this particular end of the wick and this is where it closed, right? So this, uh, the color and these four things uh, gave you five pieces of information about this particular stock, right? Uh, similarly, a green candle just tells you that the share price uh, went up from its starting point, okay? Uh, there is a nuance over here. See, this uh, 10th November, ko, the stock ended here, right? Uh, this particular day, the stock price started over here, okay? So it's not that wherever the stock ended, say this was uh, 400 rupees, where it ended, and say this was 350, right? So it's not necessary that since it ended at 330 at 400, uh, when it is 950 in the next morning, it will again start at 400. It could start at 350. Uh, how does that happen? Uh, there is a window, uh, 15 minute window before the actual market starts where you just submit your bids and uh, at that time a matching algorithm kind of happens and it might turn out that 350 pe most bids are getting matched. So that's why it opened at 350 instead of 400, right? So this could be called a gap down. So 400 say it, uh, it fell and it uh, started at 350. So a gap down happened over here. Uh, so it started at 350. At some point in the day it fell even below that. At some point it went above say this was uh, 470 or something. Uh, say at some point in the day it went up to 500 rupees and finally it settled at 470. The fact that it opened at 350 and it ended at 470 tells you it's a green candle. Uh, it's a green candle so you have to read it this way. The fact that it opened here and it closed here. So the color tells you how to read it. Like, do you start from here and look it down or you start from here and you look it up, right? Uh, so the next day again, uh, uh, it was a day when uh, the market fell. Uh, not the market, this particular stock price fell. Uh, it say started at 500, it gapped up, but over the course of the day, it again eventually fell and uh, say it closed at 380 or something, right? So these are candlesticks, right? Uh, so why is it important to study candlesticks as such? Uh, people have observed candlestick charts over uh, decades and centuries now even. Uh, there are a whole bunch of patterns they have started to see on these uh, things, right? Uh, individually, it's telling you something about what happened in a particular day. But when you look at an entire uh, uh, pattern of this over many days, uh, it tells you a whole bunch of additional information about that stock price, right? Actually, this would be a good time to show an actual uh, candlestick chart. Let's project things. So, hmm. so okay. Uh, what I am showing here uh, is Nifty index ka, uh, candlestick charts for a day uh, interval, right? I can change it to anything. The least thing you can see is one minute. Right? So minute by minute you can see the candlesticks. Uh, the most you can see is month by month. Right? So this is, every candle here represents a certain month. So what this is showing is, uh, in November Nifty has gone up. Right? In October also Nifty has gone up from where it started. Right? Uh, let's look at day candles. Right? Uh, and instead of Nifty, let us actually look at some random company as such uh, SRF cool let's look at SRF right uh, this is a 
company which manufactures fluorocarbons or something. Uh, it's something I have invested in. Uh, okay, let's just do an experiment, okay? Imagine I know nothing about this company at all and you ask me, is SRF worth investing right now or not, right? Uh, I literally know nothing. You just show me these charts, okay? Uh, one thing you can do, and this is only applicable to short-term trading as such, uh, not for long-term investing. Uh, what you're observing here is, see, uh, let's zoom it out further, okay? Stock price goes up at a certain point, comes down, goes up, uh, comes down, goes up, right? Uh, what I want you to see is this horizontal line that I'm plotting, uh, showing here right now, right? Uh, this point may the stock price seems to be coming there multiple times and then reversing direction right what is actually happening here a share price is finally uh, telling you the price at which buyers and sellers are agreeing to sell a particular stock and buy it back right what seems to be happening is a bunch of times the stock price seems to be falling to uh, uh, these levels like so uh, it seems to be falling till here, then it's reversing direction. Again, it falls here, it reverses direction. So a lot of your stock price uh, is determined by, with, by what your algorithms of big players are doing, right? And these algorithms uh, look at past data to decide whether they have to buy or sell a particular stock. Uh, or even if you assume it's a huge uh, individual player who is investing in a certain stock, what does he see, right? He sees the fact that uh, the stock multiple times when it comes here, it reverses direction, right? So what he does is the moment the stock price reaches here, he decides to buy a whole bunch of the stock. Whenever there's a whole lot of buying pressure on a certain stock, what happens is demand has gone up, right? So now sellers will demand more money for their uh, stock. So now the share price goes up, right? It keeps going up, it goes up. And again, if I were to draw a certain vertical line like this over here, uh, this is another point where it seems to be changing direction, right? It reaches a certain upper ceiling, then goes down and it reaches a bottom ceiling, then goes up. So these are called levels of support and resistance. This is your support because share price reaches here, it feels a certain support and then it goes up. This is your resistance somewhere roughly here because it is not able to break this uh, imaginary ceiling over here, right? So if you ask me, should I invest in SRF right now or not? I would say wait for some more time. It is right now over here, which is kind of like a support level. You could say ki here, there's been a whole bunch of activity on this particular line. But the safe point for you would be wait for it to come down further. Wait till here. The moment it reaches here, also don't invest. Uh, look for confirmation of your hypothesis, right? My hypothesis is that this is a level of uh, support. So ideally, it should change direction here, right? So I wait for it to reach. Say tomorrow it reaches here, right? Uh, it comes here. I will wait one more day to see that if the next candle is going up, right? So that is confirmation for my hypothesis. So the moment I get some kind of confirmation, I can start to invest in this, right? So uh, that would be a place to buy. Another thing uh, that you can do is, uh, I can't see it in this particular graph, but I want to show something else also. So that is what I mainly use technical analysis for. Uh, uh, a lot of people uh, put a lot more thought into technical analysis as such, where they try to see patterns as such, right? Uh, Actually, let me see if I can show you any interesting pattern here. Uh, okay, this is kind of an interesting one. So this, what you're seeing here, right? Uh, this is called a head and shoulder pattern. Uh, assume there are two shoulders here and a head in between, right? So head and shoulder pattern, if you see on the chart, it is a precursor to the stock price falling down, right? Uh, so there are a lot of these different kinds of patterns. Uh, something called a doji, something called a bearish maru bozo. Uh, one other thing I can show you is uh, this, right? Uh, this is a small red candle, which is completely covered by a bigger red candle. So this is called a bearish engulfing candle. This is usually a precursor to a fall in stock price, right? Uh, you can come up with these things. I don't put a lot of faith in these, uh, mainly because uh, 
सी इफ यू शो मी अ पर्सन हु कैन लुक एट अ लाइव चार्ट एंड से नेक्स्ट यहाँ पे होगा कैंडल देन आई कैन बिलीव इट बट इन हाइंड साइड यू कैन ड्रॉ ऑल काइंड ऑफ पैटर्न एंड से हाँ ये था हेड एंड शोल्डर राइट सो दैट्स वाई आई डोंट पुट दैट मच आई मीन एटलीस्ट आई हैव एंड स्पेंड दैट मच टाइम टू लर्निंग ऑल द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पैटर्न बिकॉज आई एम नॉट कन्विंस सम पीपल से टेक्निकल एनालिसिस इज एस्ट्रोलॉजी फॉर ट्रेडर्स right you try to observe all these patterns and make all kinds of justification but what i mainly uh, try to see in a chart like this is where is your level of support and resistance and uh, has some hypothesis been confirmed uh, a reversal at a support is time for me to invest a reversal at a resistance is time for me to sell right that's the basic thing i get another thing is uh, actually let me talk about it first assume uh, you uh, uh, got a chance to invest in google right after the ipo uh, you put some money in it uh, say google in a year went up 10x right uh, your mind is blown like never before have you had a 10x return on your investment in one year right uh, so you would be tempted to sell okay imagine you did sell one year down the line say google grows further it goes up 100x right the person who didn't sell now is like okay like 100x is where i test my luck i will sell right now like uh imagine he sells there five years down the line someone is sitting at 1000x right so this is a psychological bias that people have where they sell some stock when it is at its all time high right uh that is something you should think about more because what does a stock being at its all time high tell you uh it means this is some company which the people are valuing a lot at the moment that is why its stock price is that high right uh if you are seeing something reach an all time high like uh, it's like suddenly finding out that this person is particularly talented like would you try to be friends with that person or like hide away from him right or co- cut all contact that's the thing you should look at with share price also when something is at, at an all time high it might be a great time for you to invest more in that company i'm not saying it always turns out that way because you do see these reversals happen right from the peak so when should you ideally invest uh, so that is something you can look at from charts so srf itself okay fine this is if i go further back okay so this stock srf stock itself uh this is what 2021 okay uh at 2021 this horizontal line that you are seeing uh at that time this was a all time high say this was an all time high because uh it was even lower right if you go all the way back to the share price uh it has just been rising and at each of these peaks you might have felt like this is the most it can reach and you could have exited and you would have missed out the whole thing see it was 485 rupees uh, at this particular point right now it's at 2000 rupees and this is just in the last 3 years right uh, so that's a 5x return you would have missed out if you had sold at this point so how do you catch these breakout patterns uh, so this over here uh, is roughly uh this here was a resistance as such right uh now let's actually zoom into this happened uh, over here right okay this was the point where that stock saw a sudden uptick right and since then it's been going up assume this horizontal line was your previous resistance uh so now one of two things should happen right it hits a resistance and it changes direction goes back and follows whatever trend it was following so far or a new pattern has emerged right here you see a very big candle uh which shows ki on this particular day the stock price went very much up uh this is not when you invest right uh you can't say ki a new pattern has been formed at this point because uh right now the resistance has been tested for the first time right and you shouldn't if you are a long term investment investor don't uh, f- like don't harp a lot on the fact that you lost this much of upside on a particular day uh, you would be way better off like getting multiple indicators of uh, confirmation and then investing okay so uh, 
here it broke a previous resistance the next day also it went up the next day also it went up so you have three days of continuous uh, uh, trend and now you can clearly say ki whatever was the resistance it does not hold anymore the chart is forming a new pattern right uh, so now you can invest at any of these points right here it's a red candle it fell but still see it closed right here it is still above whatever was your previous uh, resistance right so all of these are great points to invest right what a horizontal uh, movement in the chart tells you is uh, imagine you are lic of india uh, you have say lakhs of crores to invest right that is how they are able to give you a better return on your money uh, so how would you as an lic invest uh, you can't say ki mujhe uh, is company mein 500 crore dalna hai you just don't go to the market and put that uh, 500 crore in a single day right what you do is uh, uh you want to in buy this stock in a way that the price doesn't go up a whole lot because of your buying pressure right so uh you would say of that 500 crore uh, invest 10 crore this week 10 crore next week so with every uh, investment of yours the stock price will go up a bit so that is what this particular trend is showing you uh this is called a consolidation phase where people are slowly buying up the stock and it is consolidating horizontally right uh, the mom this was something where a lot of people tried to buy a whole bunch of things how do i know a lot of people were buying this what do you see below right this over here is showing you volume okay uh, this is your share price this is showing you volume what volume is basically telling you is how many uh, uh, contracts got bought or sold in a particular day right uh, i sell you five stocks you buy five stocks from me volume is 5 then someone else buys five more volume is 10 so it's cumulative addition of all the uh, contracts that were bought or sold in a given day all of your technical analysis is valid only when there's healthy volume supporting it right because uh, uh, imagine there's a particular share and uh, of the lakhs of people who are holding that particular stock only say a few hundred people traded in a particular day they might do anything stupid or irrational on that particular day right they might agree to buy it at a very low price or sell it at a very high price so whatever they are doing if that is what your chart is reflecting it's not a healthy indicator you can't trust that data but something like this where it is backed by a whole huge amount of volume it means ki big institutional players are behind this move right that is something you can go and trust because now you know ki it's not like some small time trader who is manipulating the price of the stock it is backed by a huge institutional investor like a foreign institutional investor say like a us pension fund or something or even an indian institutional investor like your lic or uh, uh, any of these mutual fund houses right uh, mutual funds are basically institutional investors because they are taking all of your money and uh, they uh invest that in huge chunks they are a institution as such which invest money right so uh this is what mainly this candlestick graph is supposed to tell you uh this could be right now i'm showing you a particular share price uh you could change it to anything else right gold ka price it could be and it could also be represented in these form of charts uh it could be nifty ka index right so in all of these uh basic thing that you need to know is what these things itself mean so in a particular trading day as such what i do is i open nifty ka uh, candlestick charts and set it to one minute so every minute i am observing how the candlestick charts form uh sometimes i see ki some resistance has been touched or some support has been reached and i wait for some confirmation to happen to decide my further move right so this is just one part of your technical analysis toolkit that is available to you just don't blindly rely on any one thing when you are doing any kind of investing or trading or i guess anything in life also wait for multiple factors to align and then make a decision right uh, so this was one thing that you could have done uh, just for your short term investing as such like you hear from your dad or something he invest in this company it will go up at least this is a bare amount of due diligence you could do right right now is it at a support or is it at a resistance and then decide to do that is one thing you could do uh 
now i can actually go into options trading itself or uh, any doubt so far like i mean is it all making sense what i'm saying so far uh would you folks be interested in knowing more about options trading itself uh what a trading day looks like okay cool uh i'll just briefly pause this <clears throat> cool lights back okay <clears throat> Do you need a break? Does anyone need a break? Cool. <clears throat> no, no. It's okay. You leave, no, at six thirty. What to do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool fun stuff options trading okay i'll tell you how i got into options trading um, i had a brother who was much more smarter than me and he was 7 years older uh, he got into iit and since then like uh, all the comparisons happened right so uh, when he started uh, doing his own job uh, he once came home and told me he lost some 5 6 lakhs in options trading and i was like one day i'll also do options trading and i'll actually make money <laughs> not lose so that is how options trading ka idea came in my mind so i read up a bit about options and all uh, like many years later i started working and uh, when covid finally happened i think that was when i made my first options trade as such uh, march mein everyone was working from home so uh, I just in between meetings and all, uh, I would just make some random bet in the market. It was just that I want to learn what this is. This seems exciting and it's comfortable. That I can lose up to this much. Uh, that's entertainment cost or education cost, right? And I'll see what happens. So, uh, what options does is uh, I told you about that earlier example, right? Uh, where uh, uh, the guy who heard a rumor that airport. I go and land price will go up. He went and entered into an options contract to lock his price, right? Uh, so, similar example that might be more relatable. Uh, gold price, right? Gold price keeps fluctuating and it's always in the news that it has gone up and it has gone down. Uh, people generally try to make money on gold price going up, right? At least that's what our parents and all do. Uh, not a lot of people think about how do you make money when an asset price goes down. right uh, so this is something i covered in the last talk also uh, so there's a way to make money when some asset goes down right uh, think of a scenario in which uh, you guys have say 10 grams of gold okay and uh, say uh, 10 gram of gold ka cost right now uh, is say 40000 rupees okay i have a view that gold price will fall over the coming month right So what do I do? Uh, I know that you don't have any use for this gold right now, and it's not a piece of jewelry, right? Uh, assume it's just a block of gold or a coin of gold that you have. So uh, whatever gold you have, it is equivalent to anything I can get in the market and give it back to you, right? So this is the basic premise. You have gold, I don't. Uh, the gold you have is the same as gold available anywhere. No uniqueness to this piece of gold, right? Uh, I come up to you and say that. Uh, loan me this piece of gold for uh, say 5000 rupees uh, i will return this gold to you at the end of one month and uh, you get to keep that 5000 right uh, if you are a person who is not concerned about gold at all uh, it is just going to be in your locker you will go ahead and uh, enter into this contract right what is the cost for you you are just getting 5000 and you don't get to see your gold for um, a month that's all right so you go and enter into this trade me as a person who has a view that gold price will go down what do i do i give you 5000 immediately i go and uh, okay cut kiska bhi aba cool uh cool so okay where were we we were making money of friends so uh gold price is falling down uh i loaned this 40000 worth of gold from you by paying you 5000 rupees 
since my viewpoint is that gold price will go down in a month, the moment I get my hands on that gold, I sell it in the market, right? I get that 40,000 rupees in my hand. Uh, now I wait for gold price to go down. Uh, say two weeks down the line, gold price does go down. It is now at say 25,000 from your 40. What do you do? You go back in the market, buy 10 grams of gold for 25,000 rupees. Uh, so now you just need to return this uh, gold to your friend. So you sold it for 40,000, you bought it back for 25,000, 15,000 is your profit minus the 5,000 you paid that guy initially, right? So this is kind of like your options contract itself, uh, where uh, actually, I mean, it's kind of tricky because I am forced to give that person back his gold, right? It's not optional for me. So uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, so imagine the other scenario. You held a view that gold price would go down. Uh, in three weeks time, say instead of 40,000, the gold is now at 50,000. You are still obligated to return that uh, 10 grams of gold, no matter what the cost has gone up to. So now what do you do? You have already paid that guy 5,000. You sold his gold for 40,000. You buy it back from the market at whatever is the current price. Uh, say it is 50,000 now. So you have actually paid 10,000 extra to buy it back plus that 5,000 you paid that guy initially right so uh, now you have net lost 15,000 on a transaction where you thought you would make money right uh, so there are various parties involved here and the various var variables uh, involved in this are uh, are you a buyer or a seller does the underlying asset ka price goes up or down right so let's form a <clears throat> nice uh, four by four to depict this, right? Uh, buyer, seller. I'll introduce two new terms here. Uh, call option. option okay cool okay uh, it's good if we can keep tracing back to the gold example but uh, just let's right away go into options trading what I do right I trade in uh, nifty uh, index uh, nifty index for options trading so what is the bet I'm taking Actually, I, I do have an example for this. This is something I put on my stories, okay, to explain options trading. So, uh, imagine you are at a horse race and you're betting on horses, right? Uh, uh, so, what happens, like, imagine there are 10 horses over there. Uh, the healthy horse, uh, everyone assumes, has the most likelihood of winning the race, right? So, if you try to bet on that particular horse, uh, Sure, like your likelihood of winning is highest, because, but since everyone is betting on that, the amount of money you might make on it, even if that horse wins, is not as much, right? Uh, your margins are reduced in that sense. Your multiplier is reduced in some sense. Like you put 100, even if you win, you might say make 110 rupees. Uh, in this set of 10 horses, assume there's a horse which is uh, very old and frail. No one assumes that that horse will win. It is the slowest among the pack. So, uh, there is someone running this betting shop, right? Uh, so, that is the guy who is actually doling out all the money, right? So, for him, anyone betting on this old and frail horse, he assumes that this is like free money for me. This guy will certainly not win by betting on this horse. So, what he'll, he'll try to sweeten that deal, right? He will say, ki, like, put 10 rupees uh, on this horse. If you win, you get 100, like 10x of your money as opposed to something, some horse which is healthy and everyone assumes to win, he might just give you like 1.1x instead of 10x return, right? Uh, now assume you have placed all your bets. Uh, you have placed your bet on this old horse uh, because you first of all don't even have enough money also. Assume to bet on the highest horse itself, uh, you need 100 rupees minimum. To bet on your old horse, you just need 10 rupees. So that is the only bet you can take, right? So you go and bet on the old horse. Now the race starts, uh, as expected all the healthier horses are way up front. Uh, now imagine a cat suddenly shows up in your racetrack, right? Uh, all the horses which are leading the pack, 
uh, they get uh, scared by the horse coming in, uh, by the cat coming in, and they just start going helter skelter, right? The horse you bet on is so far behind, he doesn't even realize there's a cat, right? Uh, by the time he's come, uh, he's already overtaken all the others who are just panicking all, in all the directions. Now, when you look at the halfway mark of the race, your horse, which no one expected to win, is leading the pack. Everyone else has still just recovered from that cat attack, right? And now it's again getting back into the race. Now, you are holding on to this 10 rupee ticket, uh, which uh, people value a lot because now they think you do have a chance of winning, as opposed to the start of the race, right? Uh, so the guy sitting next to you, he sees that you have this 10 rupee ticket. He tells you, uh, let me buy this uh, ticket from you. I'll give you 100 rupees right now, right? You have two options now. Either you exit your bet completely by accepting this 100 rupees from the other guy uh, and you are no longer in the bet. Uh, it's as good as this guy has the position right now, right? And you pocketed 90 rupees. You bought it for 10, sold it for 100, right? Uh, or the other option is uh, you decide ki you want to continue till the end of the race and you expect you will make 200 rupees instead of the 100 he is offering you right now, right? Uh, if you are a smart person, you would realize the fact that there is still half the race left, like there is no more cats coming in to rescue you again and uh, you would exit this trade, right? So you have exited with like uh, 10x return on your money in half the race, right? So that is one thing you did. Uh, if you did go on to the end of the race and if your horse didn't win, you would have lost the entire 10 rupees, right? So this is roughly how your options contract also works. Uh, what you're doing here is uh, like your equivalent of horse race betting is you try to bet uh, where nifty ka value will be, okay? On certain expiries, right? So here uh, in a horse race, you're betting ki by the end of the race, who is the winner, right? Uh, in nifty... Uh, options contracts, what you're doing is, uh, there's a contract which expires every Thursday. It's called weeks, weekly expiry. Uh, there are monthly expiring contracts, which is the last Thursday of every month. There are quarterly expiring and all of these kinds of contracts. So you can make bets up to a long time ahead, right? Almost uh, up to a year ahead, you can place your bets. Uh, so, uh, okay, uh, imagine I am uh, participating in an options contract which expires this coming Thursday, right? Uh, and say Nifty is uh, right now at 18,300, okay? Uh, it's at 18,300. So, what are your uh, options available? You can either say ki it will go above 18,300. Uh, so, you could be bullish on Nifty. So that's the term. Bullish is uh, you are expecting the price to go up. Uh, you could be bearish on Nifty, which is to say you expect it to go down, right? Or you could say you are neutral, which is to say uh, it will still be around this value itself by this Thursday, right? Uh, so uh, let's look at it from the point of view of buyers, okay? Buyers are your horse race betting may equivalent of someone who goes and buys that ticket, right? Uh, your seller is the guy who is running the entire show, right? So let's say you are a call buyer. A call buyer has the viewpoint. Uh, he has a bullish viewpoint, which is to say he expects the underlying asset, okay? Uh, in this case, since we are dealing with Nifty, uh, our underlying asset is the value of Nifty at any point, right? So call buyer's viewpoint is bullish. He expects the underlying asset to go up. A uh, put, okay, uh, let's then come to the seller. If this guy is bullish and expects the underlying asset to go up, the guy who's selling it would obviously be neutral or bearish, right? Neutral uh, bearish. So he expects that underlying asset is either stagnant or will go down, okay? Similar to this, put option buyer has a bearish viewpoint. He expects that by this Thursday, it would have gone below 18,300, right? So this is a bearish stance. Uh, this person expects underlying asset to go down. So again, the guy who's selling him this bet or this contract, he has a neutral or 
bullish because as i said like uh, all options contracts or all trading are uh, zero sum game so whatever is the stance you take there is someone else taking the opposite stance right okay this is your view point on the asset itself uh, now let's come to risk that each of them assumes right uh, whenever you're betting there's a certain risk you assume and there's a certain profit potential that you expect to make right this guy okay uh, what about his risk uh, this is your horse buyer right uh, horse race better so uh, when he puts 10 rupees on a horse or 100 rupees on a horse that is the maximum he can lose he can't lose more than what he is bet right so his risk is limited by his uh, option premium okay this is called the premium that you pay to enter into any of these bets or contracts that's a premium you pay this is your equivalent of your uh, house rent card advance or whatever right the equivalent of it risk limited to option premium right uh, so okay the other guy seller what does his risk look like if this guy's risk is limited uh, actually wait before going to this guy's risk let's just see his profit potential here right uh, this guy entered into a bet with say 10 rupees he can make 10x 100x whatever x of his money uh, in nifty uh, the profit you make is decided by how right you are in the sense uh, if nifty is at 18300 you took a bet that by this thursday it will reach 18400 18400 ke jitna bhi upar jata hai that is your profit right so if by this thursday nifty closes at 18700 uh, you would be making at least 300 rupees ka profit because you are correct on your bet by 300 points right so it uh, there are a whole bunch of other factors which uh, decide exactly how much money you make but on the day of the expiry of the contract, on Thursday, it is supposed to be the exact difference uh, or how right you are. But again, like, uh, like that horse raising example, you can always leave in between. Right? You don't need to wait till Thursday. Uh, so if in this example itself, uh, actually, so yeah, anyway, the profit potential here is theoretically unlimited, right? It can go up to any level. Okay. So this guy has limited risk and unlimited profit. So the guy who's selling him should have the opposite uh, thing, right? His risk should be unlimited. Why? Because this guy gets paid by this guy, right? So if he has unlimited profit, that is all this guy's risk, right? So his risk is unlimited and his profit is limited. Why is that? Uh, because uh, when I sell you a certain bet, I only make money whatever is the initial amount I collect, right? Uh, so uh, to enter into this contract, like Nifty going up to 18,400, I have to pay some money. So that is the maximum that guy makes, right? Uh, and he just keep, gets to keep that much if he is right. Uh, if Nifty ends uh, at 18,400 or below, he just pockets whatever money he initially kept. Whereas if it goes up, uh, like he starts losing that much money. Uh, Say he sold 18400 ka call option, say for 50 rupees. So uh, the moment Nifty crosses 18450, right? From that moment onward, he has to pay from his pocket because he is wrong by that much. Like he collected 50 rupees, uh, even if Nifty closed at 18420, say, he still gets to keep, uh, he just lost 20 rupees, right? But the seller, uh, I mean, okay, this bit might be a bit confusing. If you guys have doubts, like, stop me, okay? So, yeah, basically, this is the parts to an options contract. As a buyer, uh, when you buy a call option, uh, you expect something to go up. Your risk is limited. Your profit is unlimited. The guy who's selling you has the entire opposite viewpoint. When you have a put option buyer, uh, he says ki nifty is at 18300 i want to take a bet ki it will close at 18200 by this thursday so he has a bearish viewpoint again his risk is limited uh, this is like he is again entering into a bet so whatever is the premium he pays that is the maximum he loses uh, 
limited to option premium and as profit is theoretically unlimited but since you're taking a bet that it will go down uh, it can't go below zero right so it's limited to that your profit is theoretically unlimited but 18200 if you take a bet it will go 18200 ke below uh, the max it can go down to is zero right uh, so that way it's not 100 percent unlimited but yeah for understanding that is fine and the guy who's selling your put option, he again has the opposite odds, right? Uh, his risk is unlimited. Again, limited to zero. Uh, that is how far down it can go. And his profit is limited to whatever he collects from the other guy at the start of that contract, right? Uh, so, okay. These are all the things that you can do with an options contract, right? You see Nifty and you say ki by uh, this Thursday, uh, Nifty either goes up or down and you can be a buyer or a seller of a call or a put option. So you can be a player in any of these things. Uh, so where should you play, right? Uh, okay. This guy, uh, you see ki this guy has limited risk and unlimited profit. So this seems like a very appealing trade, right? Buyers always seem to have unlimited profit potential, but limited risk. Seems like a great trade on paper. Uh, but for him to be right, you only have uh, one of the scenarios playing out. In the sense, uh, if you are a buyer and you, say you bought a call option, you only make money when you are proven right, which is to say the index went above your bet, right? But the seller wins out of two in two out of three scenarios. He can just wait for uh, Nifty to be stagnant or if it goes down, right? So this guy, although he has unlimited risk and limited profit, he seems to make money in more of the scenarios, right? And this is what actually happens in the market. Your sellers are usually institutions, right? These are big players because they can only absorb all the risk. You as an individual, you can't just go about selling options because Whenever you sell an option, you are supposed to also put up a lot of additional money in your uh, as collateral or whatever as margins, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, that is the thing. Like people enter generally when they enter options trading, they come in as buyers. Uh, once they start losing money enough time, they realize all the money is in selling, and then they move to selling, right? Uh, but uh, the thing about selling also, there's a phrase. Uh, it's called. Uh, Option sellers eat like a chicken but poop like a cow. Which is to say you make money day to day like over a long time. Then one day like suddenly something happens which you never expected and you lost all the money you collected over months, right? I am mostly a seller these days. Uh, so yeah, uh, all my phone pay savings are uh, going into option selling these days. <laughs> that is how things work. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, all these are your possible scenarios. Uh, so, okay, right now, if I have to walk you through my trading day, what do I do? Uh, I look at the charts. Uh, so one chart I would be looking at is candlestick charts. Uh, so a lot of people assume ki for you to do trading, you should be very updated with the news, right? What is happening in global economy and all of that. So that is called macroeconomics, where you try to predict the direction in which market will go based on uh, factors happening around you, right? Uh, I don't think I have enough knowledge to be on top of all the things that are happening around the world or to make sense of those. So I don't bother with that at all. Uh, what I rely on is uh, data, right? Uh, because say something happens in the economy, right? Uh, say uh, Russia goes to war with someone. Uh, you can start predicting that certain things will happen like the index will fall or you can wait and look at what the other people are doing. Assume other people are smarter and they have done all the homework. Just see what they are doing in the market. Uh, your uh, candlestick charts is one way to know what people are doing, where they are uh, psychologically flipping direction. That is one point for you. The other thing I look at is open interest charts. right? Uh, these two things are basically the only thing I do uh, use for all of my options trading. So I can actually now come to, uh, I'll again need to project, but uh, let's do some exercises right now, just to see if you have grasped the idea of uh, 
This is the part where I get to grill you people. Quiz, quiz time, folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Let's do this. Okay. Nifty is at 17,000 today, right? Uh, I have a viewpoint that in two weeks' time, it will fall down to 16,500. What can I do right now? What are the possible things I can do right now? No, no, folks, <laughs> one person, please. We'll edit it to, huh? You buy a put option. Great. Uh, you buy a put option, right? Uh, because uh, put buy, if you remember, was on this second uh, panel here in that 4x4 four four, where you had a bearish viewpoint. So you can buy a put, okay? So actually, I was actually wondering how to show this in an intuitive way. Because honestly, like uh, all these terms are pretty uh, esoteric as such, right? It's not something you can just relate to anything else you have seen. These are just things you have to learn, right? And so this is say where Nifty is. So the first example I gave was it going down, right? So when it goes down, uh, if you are on the buy side, you can do a put buy, okay? That is one way to capitalize on this movement. Uh, is there any other way to capture this? Uh, what else can you do? Yeah, on the sell side, right? So what do you sell though? Uh, you can sell a call option, great. Uh, so I can sell any of the call options between 17,000 to 16,500, right? Uh, because, uh, if I sold a 17,000 call option, what it means is I don't expect it to cross 17,000, right? And if you are saying ki it's actually going to close at 16,500, I could even sell a 16,600 call, right? So put buy is one way to make money here or call sell, right? And again, if my viewpoint is up here, uh, what can I do now? What can I buy? What can I sell? So you can buy a call option or you can sell a put option. So assume it is again at 17,000. If I expect it to go to 17,500, uh, I can buy a 17,500 call or I can buy a 17,000 call itself uh, because then I make money on Utna, Jitna Upar Jata, right? But a 17,000 call. Uh, buying would be more expensive than buying a 17500 call. This is your equivalent of betting on the weak horse versus the... Because 17000 moving to 17500 in a week, uh, if I buy a 17 call, I just need it to be slightly above 17, right? In a week's time, that can happen. But to take a bet that in a week, it will go up 500 points or more, that is more unlikely, so its premium will be lower, right? So those are the decisions you have to make. Like it's okay for you to have a certain viewpoint, it will go up or down, but where do you place your bets, right? Uh, so you can buy any of these calls or you can sell any of these puts because if you think it will end here, you can sell a put at this level, this level, any of these levels in between, you can sell puts. And again, the, you will make more money selling a put here because you have higher risk here. Uh, Wait, 17, no, actually you will make more money uh, selling a put here. Yeah, because the same thing, like uh, 17,000 ke just upar jane se, uh, zada, I mean, this is more risky, right? Because in a day's time, it can go up to 17,100 and you're already fucked. As opposed to selling a put at 17,500, where even if it goes to 17,100, 200, 300, you are still right. So, uh, here you make less money, uh, here you make more money. Whenever you assume more risk, your odds of making more money, right? Call buy, sell, uh, put, whenever you are, whenever market is going up, you can do these two things or you can do these two things, right? Uh, there's also futures involved, but let's just stick to options. This is all options, right? So, this is something you can literally do. Like if you have a account at zero though or something, uh, you can go to uh, Kite 
and sensible as their options trading platform and uh, you can just place a bet like uh, these things uh, the way you place a bet is uh, it will say ki 17000 aaj right now it is actually 18300 i think and uh, you can place bets on say uh, i generally prefer to trade in ek month aage ka options so uh, i would say put bets on last thursday of december right and i take some value uh, ki it will reach right now i'm bullish so say let's i'm taking a view point ki it will reach 18500 so it will tell me ki uh, one unit of this bet cost say uh, should be at least 200 uh, okay uh, let's say it cost 300 rupees right now uh, i will have to at least buy 50 of these because that is your lot size right uh, you can't just give 300 so minimum you will be putting 15000 right so that would be your cost for uh, entering into this bet and if that is some amount you are comfortable losing just for the sake of seeing what happens in the options world go ahead and do it like uh, the moment you enter into a contract from tomorrow you should be able to see on your terminal ki uh, are you plus or minus right that is what hooks people uh, you constantly see sometimes you uh, put this 15000 you are up 10000 more right and it's not something you did something is happening in the world and you made that money right so that is why traders are forever glued to their screen because they can exit whenever some freak thing happens right okay uh, anyway i will decide like this 18500 that didn't come out of thin air like uh, where do i exactly decide to take a particular bet right उसके लिए देर इज डेटा अवेलेबल एंड वी कैन लुक एट दैट इफ यू गैस वॉन्ट टू टेक अ ब्रेक और समथिंग दिस विल बी द लास्ट लेग ऑफ इट लाइक आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू रन थ्रू ओपन इंटरेस्ट क्राफ्ट एंड देन वी शुड बी रन ओके ठीक है दिस इज नॉट एन एडवर्टाइजमेंट फॉर जीरो द बट आई वॉक यू गैस थ्रू वॉट आर द things available okay uh okay uh so this is your basic kite terminal uh this is where you put your money and uh, basically make transfer money from your bank account to zero the to make further investments or trades right uh okay let's forget the fact that i have negative cash right now so you have different views over here uh, this is called a holdings view which shows all your long term investments uh, there is a positions view which shows you active trades that you have going on right uh, so if you make a certain investment today even in a long term stock that will also show up in your positions view uh but the next day onwards it will go away but if you have any options contract or a futures contract like i have uh it will show up here so this is what you're seeing is abha's money uh the minus minus uh 17000 <laughs> so yeah fun fun stuff uh cool i am positive which is the question she asked aap kaise paise bana rahe ho aur mere kaise doob gaye <laughs> because No, the thing is, this used to be a plus four lakh position. It's now down to one lakh. So, I have also lost money. Uh, so, anyway, uh, this is another uh, thing they have called Sensible. Sensible is specifically catered to options traders. So, you can log into Sensible from any of your uh, other accounts. Like, I log into Sensible using my Zero the account, but you could be an ICICI direct. Uh, Uh, or grow or whatever and they have all these integrations so what it helps me do is again the positions i have on zero the it uh, reflects over here also uh <clears throat> now what do i do first of all uh okay wait let me see if i can zoom it further large okay so this here is called an option chain uh it seems a bit intimidating but it's just telling you some basic pieces of information uh so as i told nifty closed at 18300 right on friday so that is on the top left here uh if you look at it here see uh left side mein there is this yellow patch that you are seeing and again on the right side there is this whole yellow patch 
uh, but in between there is one white line right so this is showing you uh, what is the closest uh, uh, bet that you can take compared to your current level so 18307 is where it is right now and 18350 is the white thing okay so this is separating uh, it's like a separation of call buyers call sellers put buyers and put sellers uh, this is called at the strike uh, price okay 18350 is your at the strike price right now uh, i have set my this to uh, increase in levels of 100 so 18000 18100 200 300 but uh, 50 is the least granularity you can go in i generally tr don't trade in the 50 ones because uh, uh, there's not as much data available around the 50 ones the 100 ones you have more data available that's why i prefer those uh, what you are seeing over here right this part is showing you call buy ke le, what are the different prices right uh, <clears throat> if you look here, uh, 18,000 say it's increasing, right? And call buy me, you're taking a bet that it will, uh, it's a bullish bet that you're making, right? Uh, this is for 24th November, which is your coming Thursday, right? Uh, if you open this, you will see every Thursday are listed things here. I have chosen 24th November. So what it is telling me is, for me to buy an 18,350 call right now, the last traded price was 92.7 rupees, right? So if I wanted to enter 18,350, 18, 24th November expiry call option, it would cost me 92.7 into 50, because 50 chaos may you have to minimum do, right? Uh, your lot size is 50, so you at least need to buy one lot. Uh, as you keep going down, right, see, uh, by this Thursday, if I want to take a bet ki Nifty will cross 18,700, that just cost me 6.2 rupees, right? Because this is very unlikely ki by this Thursday, Nifty will make a jump of 350 points or something to reach here. So that's why accordingly its price has gone down, right? Uh, who decides these prices? Like exactly what, where does it come from? Uh, there's a formula called Black Scholes formula. Uh, it was formulated by two of these scientists, I guess, Black and Scholes. And uh, what it basically gave people was the ability to price any option contract, right? Irrespective of the underlying asset. So this what I'm showing you is for Nifty. But this could be a gold options contract or oil options contract. But that Black Scholes formula would be still valid, right? Uh, so the moment they came up with this formula, it was a big breakthrough because now uh, at the end of the day, options is a risk management strategy, right? And they had come up with a uh, way of actually pricing options contract, which everyone agrees on, right? So this is how it's happening. Uh, the factors involved in it at a high level, even I don't uh, go into the details of what goes into an options price, but intuitively, the more unlikely something is to happen, its price will go down. The closer you are to expiry, the price will go down because uh, again, in a short interval, right, right now, Monday, if I take a trade that by Thursday, it will reach a certain price. That is still more likely to happen because I have three more days to go, right? As opposed to me taking a bet on Wednesday afternoon when there's just one more day left to go. So uh, their uh, option, con this same thing of value will go down over time, right? For me to show you that, I am seeing 24th November, right? Let's pick some value, 18400 for this Thursday is 69.25. Uh, if I show you the next Thursday, it should be more than that. Uh, for me to enter into that bet, so 1st December is your next options contract. So we are looking at 60, this value, right? 68.25 at 18400. So... First December 18400 that is worth 145 rupees now which is more than double right uh, so that is the thing now if I go further which is like your last uh, uh, Thursday for this that same 18400 is worth 334 rupees now so uh, that is the decision you have to make Ki, like how much do you expect nifty to go up in a certain time interval and uh, it's called something called theta. So there are a bunch of Greeks that are associated with an options price. 
uh, things like your equivalent of velocity, acceleration and all of that which you used to have. Similarly, these things also have things like that. Uh, the variable called theta is what explains the fact that option contracts uh, lose value over time, right? Uh, so that is there. Uh, this is just you uh, placing your bet, okay? At any of these, I can go and say something like B, buy or sell. So that would, if I'm buying this, I expect it to go above this. If I'm selling this, I expect it not to go above it. The yellow ones show the fact that whoever took a bet at any of these levels, they have already been proven right. That's why all of these values are in yellow. So it's called in the money. So these guys are already in the money if they had bought, an, bought a call option. And these folks here are in the money because they so, bought puts here. And they said ki Nifty would be below 18,800 uh, on this date. And it's already at 18,300. So these folks are in the money. So uh, like diagonally, these call buyers and these put buyers are in the money. And these call buyers and these put buyers are out of the money right now. So these are some terms associated to it. Are you in the money or out of the money? Right. And again, you can be seller, buyer. So all of these things are there. Uh, how do I decide where to buy or where to sell? Uh, that is the last bit I want to cover, which is your open interest graph, right? Uh, okay, cool. This is open interest graph. Uh, let's just look at this. 24th November expiry. And, uh, okay. What this, this is actually pretty confusing as such. It's okay if you don't get it. You can go back and at least know what I'm talking about, right? Green lines above the graph uh, indicate where uh, puts were sold, right? A put sell is you telling ki iske niche nahi jayega, right? So you see puts being sold here, 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 all of these levels. Uh, here it has finally tapered off, right? And then onwards you see big red lines over here. So these are points where calls have been sold, okay? Call sellers say ki iske upar nahi jayega nifty. The green ones are saying iske niche nahi jayega, red ones are saying iske upar nahi jayega. So this is like a tussle, okay, happening over here. And nifty is right now exactly stuck here. This is where there is uncertainty, no clear direction. Uh, a lot of selling over here. What it means is all of this selling, if you remember what I told was, selling is done by big institutional players, right? They have way more data than you, they know what's up, right? If they are all betting about the fact that by this Thursday, Nifty wouldn't cross 18,400. You also can as a retailer assume ki shayad nahi jayega iske upar. Okay? So this is data up to last Friday for this Thursday ka expiry. Okay? Uh, so this is a cumulative thing. Okay? So since this contract was alive, this graph would have been constantly updating. This is just ki Friday end of the day, this is what the scene looks like. So when I look at this right now, what can I say? Based on data so far, I don't think it will go above 18,400. But there is some amount of put buildup also happening here. So there is a chance ki people, it shifts over here. This seems like a much more uh, solid thing to say ki shayad iske upar to definitely nahi jayega. Because there are hardly any put sellers here. Here to nothing. So here and all people are more confident ki iske upar nahi jayega. Similarly here if I have to see, uh, the put sellers don't seem to be as confident as the call sellers, okay? They seem to be more or less confident that it won't go up above But these folks are kind of like undecided. Like there is equal build up here and here. So here also people are saying it won't go up above And the same number of people seem to be saying that it won't go up above Right? So here it's still not clear how far down Nifty might go. Uh, but it seems to be more or less clear ki kitna upar nahi jayega, right? But this is end of day values, right? When I am looking at uh, my trading day, in the middle of the day, what I rely on is uh, a live feed of this, okay? And this basically shows me what is happening through the day, okay? Uh, intraday, oh, why? Okay. oh fuck, you can't do this after the session, okay? Oh no, I didn't know this. Okay. Uh, so what it happens, what happens here is, uh, this was up till last Friday. This was just showing me what happened on Friday. 
ओके सो इन द मॉर्निंग इट्स ऑल एम टी एंड द मोमेंट डेटा स्टार्ट फ्लोइंग इन एवरी थ्री मिनट्स दिस गेट्स अपडेटेड सो इट्स लाइक वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी वॉट हैपन्स लाइक द मोमेंट आई सी अ लॉट ऑफ बिल्डअप ओवर हियर रेड का बिल्डअप आई कैन इमीडिएटली गो एंड वैलिडेट दिस ऑन द कैंडल स्टिक चार्ट कि नाउ निफ्टी माइट बी फॉलोइंग डाउन बिकॉज अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर सेलिंग कॉल्स ओवर हियर सो दे डोंट एक्सपेक्ट इट टू गो एनी फर्दर अप इट करस्पॉन्ड्स टू निफ्टी फॉलोइंग and the moment i see a lot of green build ups happening i know it's going to pick up so that that time i start buying calls or uh, start selling puts these kinds of things right and you can also see ki over time how it has moved right so uh, this is november 11th when there were more puts sold than calls uh, so i am guessing at the end of november 11th and 12th nifty might have gone up because there are more puts sold so let's actually see if that did happen right uh this is nifty november 12th right let's zoom in and wait oh november 11th ha huh. so it did go up right net uh on november 11th it's a green candle it went up November twelfth, it was a red candle, but it's still like above, right? It's kind of uh, still a bullish trend as such. So it does validate. Like you have two data sources. Uh, your open interest graph is uh, kind of like an advanced predictor of what will show up on the charts. So if you are quick and diligent and constantly looking at this, you can catch some quick upside over here, right? Uh, I try to play with it. Ki uh, even when i'm seeing the entire day's data uh, there is a slider here which lets me see ki what happened in the last 5 minutes the last 15 minutes so if i see a lot of people actually uh, i wanted to show you some other data where this data below the line okay wait uh there's no clear day on the fuck Oh fuck! One sec. Let's see a call unwinding. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is also an open interest chart. Uh, so the lines are not just above the x-axis. You can have lines below the x-axis. Uh, what I told was a red line above the graph shows you where puts have been sold, right? So that says that it will not go up. Uh, green uh, calls have been sold here. A green line above the x-axis would have been puts being sold. A green line below the x-axis shows you where puts have been bought. Okay. Uh, so that's how you close a trade right you sell something if you have sold something first you buy it back if you have bought something you sell it so what this means is uh, put unwinding has happened over here which is to say a lot of puts which were earlier sold here those guys are now uh, scared that so when they initially sell a put over here what it means is they didn't expect it to go below this level right But now what has happened? Uh, there's a huge red line here, which means that it's not going up. So if it's not going up, it's going to go down, right? So all the people who sold puts here, they are worried that their uh, view was wrong, so they all try to exit their positions. So this is a classic pattern of a put unwinding, where you can expect that the market will go down because red lines are over the graph, so you know it's not going above these, and there are a lot of green lines below the graph which means ki people who said it wouldn't go below a certain level they are all exiting their positions now so this is a very strong bearish indicator so yeah i mean you can all of this will come with familiarity like uh, now the moment i see a graph i know what it means but uh, if you are new to it it is very natural for you to take time to know what it actually means uh, the way i learned to even go about trading day to day was uh, there's this guy called abed hasan the sensible platform which i was showing 
the CEO of that platform, he used to be an institutional trader at one point and he does a daily market analysis. So if anyone wants to get into options trading, I would just say watch his options trading daily market analysis for a week straight. By the end of it, like whatever he is saying, you can do it on your own, right? So he only looks at four or five things. Uh, one is your charts, which I talked about, candlestick. He has a lot more knowledge of patterns also. So that is why I still keep seeing it because patterns I don't know. But he gives me patterns for this. Uh, the other is your open interest thing. Uske basis pe he'll tell what he feels is bearish or bullish. That is easy for you also to predict. Uh, the other thing he looks at is FII, DII data, which is foreign institutional investors and domestic institutional investors. Like, have they net sold stocks or bought stocks today? Uh, that data is updated at end of day. So that is also an indicator, like what large players are doing. And yeah, I mean, he does another thing, which is USD INR analysis, but that's not relevant to this. So if anyone wants to just get a flavor for something, like any other thing, you learn by getting into it. So take some very out of the money option, which has a very low premium. Like you saw six rupee bets and all, right? See what happens to your six rupee bet. Six into 50, 300 rupees is what it takes to enter into that bet. Uh, if Nifty does go up, your six rupee thing will be worth say 12 rupees or something. So 300 is 600. So that is how people get hooked, right? And uh, even if you lose it, that is 300 you lost to learn something, right? So that is basically it. Uh, uh, there is, I mean, like, yeah, uh, a lot of people ask me after the last session, ki, what do I use to uh, learn about the markets or do my own investing and all. First of all, like, as I said, if you're not fully committed to this, go with Nifty Vs, government bonds, GSEC bonds, treasury bills and all of that. That is good enough for you to make money and hedge yourself against uh, uh, inflation and all in the long term, do that. Like uh, fancy stuff usually is like only uh, rewarding in the short term. Like in the long term, bet on the index and you'll be fine. But if you do have like a purely academic interest or if you want to treat it like a side project or something, uh, uh, for stocks itself, like I try to notice things happening around me and pick up trends from there. Uh, so if I feel that a lot of people are buying cars, like I would be interested in an auto ancillary. But uh, I don't have much knowledge as such of auto ancillary. So one place I would go to is uh, uh, this site called screener.in. So screener.in basically has data on all stocks uh, in the Indian market. And uh, they go through reports and all collate it in a proper nice form. And you can put a bunch of filters on top of that. And uh, these filters could be looking like SQL queries. So it's simple things like quarter on quarter growth. Uh, if last quarter is more than previous quarter is more than previous quarter. And a lot of people have already come up with a bunch of uh, existing screens. So these screens would have names like Benjamin Graham uh, investment formula. So whatever was his thesis on the basis of that people came up with a formula and identified a bunch of stocks. So they would have screens that are sectoral or thematic in the sense ki, uh, like auto ancillary itself could be a screen there. So I go there and I get to know ki, okay, these are even the industries, uh, these are the companies operating in the industry I'm interested in. Uh, so I look at some basic data around it, ki, what is your uh, market cap? So a market cap is basically telling you the total value of that company, right? So something if it's worth in just a few hundred crores or tens of crores, I'd stay away from that. If it's more than a thousand crores, like I'm a bit more confident of putting my money in it. Uh, then I would narrow down a few companies over there. Uh, I would go to value picker forum, okay? So this value picker forum is basically something started by a bunch of folks above the age of 60. Uh, initially. So they had retired from their primary job and they all had expertise in various industries and they wanted to start a second innings in the stock markets. So they came up with this forum. So uh, if you go to that forum, like a typical conversation would be some expert from a certain industry coming and saying, ki, hey, I used to work here or like I have been studying this industry and this is my thesis of why this company would be doing well in the long run. These are the competitive factors. These are the risk factors. He'll put up his huge thesis and others will critique and all, right? And that is the thing everyone needs to make peace with, the fact that you can't know everything. So uh, uh, 
uh, feel free like reading a bunch of these analysis and seeing whatever are the common points, right? Uh, whatever is common and if smart people with a lot of experience are saying it, you can probably trust them, right? So that is what I do. First, I have my own independent thesis of where I want to invest. Then I would go to screener to pick some companies. Then I would go to value picker and see ki have people already discussed this company? If so, what are their views? And if I feel like it's okay, then I enter. And I don't put a lot of thought into it, right? Like, uh, I am not an institutional investor. I can put, say, 10 lakhs in a company this morning. And by afternoon, if I get a bad feeling about this company, I can just exit, right? I don't have to justify in front of a board that I'm exiting this stock. You also treat it that way. Like, it's not that this company with like thousands of crores or facets is going to vanish overnight, right? So if you also start hearing bad news about your company, exit. Like you might make a small dent or something in your profits, but it's relatively safe. The stock market is kind of safe, right? Uh, so yeah, that is my toolkit. Screener and value picker for long-term investment. For trading, uh, I just follow Abit's daily market analysis and... Uh, like interning at True Vegan gave me an insight into what I didn't know about trading. Like I used to sit next to the options traders. So whenever I used to show them trades, they would be like, yeah, that's tiger. <laughs> so I'd be asking them, Ki, Q, why do you feel this is shit? So they used to tell a bunch of words and I used to come back and read that up. So uh, that is enough. Like, I mean, the end of the day, you need to make money. You don't need to know why you do and why it made money, right? Uh, that you can justify later. Uh, so yeah, uh, Varsity is a great resource if you know nothing about the market. So Zero Da, someone came up with a selfless initiative to just write down everything he knows about the markets. And if you actually uh, go through whatever I've been saying, a lot of it might even be picked up straight from Varsity, right? Uh, so that is the thing. Like I myself learned about markets from scratch from Varsity, and you folks can also do that. Like for reference in the yeah, so I mean, if I'll see like there can there are more interesting things about this, like wherever I've said unlimited risk, it's not unlimited, like you can hedge your positions, right? As a simple example, uh, say I sold a call option at 18500. So my bet is it won't go above 18500, right? Uh, so I don't need to assume theoretically unlimited risk. I sold 18500 call, I can buy a 19,000 call also, right? So when I buy a 19,000 call, I am saying that 19,000 ke upar jitna bhi gaya, I'll make money on that contract. But the 18,500 call which I sold, uspe I lose money. So net you have uh, kind of hedged your risk, right? So these are called spreads. Uh, there are like things called bull call spreads, bull put spreads, bear call spreads. So different kinds of names are there. I intuitively ran into it. Like uh, I read about options basics. Uh, put my money and soon I realized, oh my God, I've put all my money in options and how do I stop my risk? And uh, that is what I said, okay, my bet right now looks like I'm taking a view key. If it goes past this point, I'll lose money. So I entered into one more contract to minimize that. Later, my brother told me there's something called spreads. So I read up spreads and I was like, oh, whatever I'm doing has a name to it. So it's kind of intuitive. A lot of it is intuitive. You guys can also figure it out. Just you need time. So I would suggest a sabbatical uh, if you want to <laughs> seriously like a yeah, burnout phase or like some thing which forces you to not look at anything else. That works great for <laughs> market study as such. So yeah, that is it. Thank you, folks. We are done. Oh, any doubts? Uh, yeah, I feel like last whole part I just uh, was too sophisticated for you folks to ask doubts only. <laughs> like yeah, watch it in 0.5x later. Anyway. Ha, so now I don't. Now I'm like YOLO. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an insurance. So right now I'm like uh, no spreads. Uh, if I lose money, I'll take formal employment again. So <laughs> that is my strategy. I'm like yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh, like, yeah, that is what I realized. Uh, so it has a great view also on Sensible uh, where you can go and actually they show graphs ki how much is your risk reward ratio and max loss, max profit and all. So without uh, hedges, I would see you itna profit kar sakta ho. The moment I put something and like itna kam, I'm like, nahi chahiye. Chahiye nahi insurance. 
तो या इट्स ओके इट्स फन दैट्स वाई इट्स ऑल्सो साइकोलॉजिकल ट्रेडिंग इज वेरी दैट्स वाई आई माइनस दिस मच ऑन आव हज मनी नो आई वॉज लाइक मेरे को अच्छा एक ट्वेंटी परसेंट के ऊपर लाना है द मोमेंट आई क्रॉस ट्वेंटी परसेंट प्रॉफिट आई लाइक ट्वेंटी फाइव सही नंबर लगता है सो नाउ इट्स एट माइनस सेवेंटीन परसेंट और समथिंग कूल वील सी थॉट्स एंड प्रेयर्स तो या दैट्स इट